My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are going to do an extension. So, all through this video career of mine, I have been saying, you know, we'll get to that and I'll explain that slowly bit and we'll build it up bit by bit by bit. This is one of them videos. So, I'm going to use a can of Red Bull, a can of Coke, and some parcel tape to explain why MotoGP, you know, bikes run V4s. Right then, so let's just fucking crack on with this puppy. So, uh, going back a bit, if you have seen the um, oh, how to choose bore and stroke video, I showed you this graph. And this graph shows the piston force um, uh, relative to the actual force, a uh, piston force relative to the size of the bore and versus the size of the stroke if you are trying to maintain the same CC. So in this case, for this example, if you haven't watched the video, I chose a 250cc because all your thousands and just like a 750 and uh, 500 twins and 250s all use that 250cc. So there's a lot of examples that you can see this and you can see all these different balls and strokes. And I showed along that line, so these are stroke versus ball and the possible ones you can have. Um, the R1 and the S1000, double R, whatever, they're all about the same. They're all in this region. And then I went on to explain that even if you take into consideration the size of the piston, so as the bore gets bigger and the stroke gets shorter, um, the piston is getting heavier. Even when you look at that, you take that into consideration, the piston forces are lower the bigger bore you go. And in a sense, uh, it's like swinging a hammer. Let me get a hammer out. Oh no, I won't. That's the wrong fucking drawer. So if you... Oh, back in Nora. Preparation, Matt. Preparation. Oh, that's an ev evil fucking... That's an evil fucking looking thing, isn't it? Right, so you get this... Oh, that's basically prom date murdering hammer, that one. So if you get this hammer, obviously if you go like this, you know, really short stroke because of... Um, force is mass times acceleration you know you're not going to get much force but if you give it a big fucking swing you know there's going to be higher forces for the same mass you know and it's because you need um you know the longer stroke you have to cover in the same amount of time which means you'll go faster you know what i mean so you know uh velocities and, and speeds and stuff is displacement over time so if the rpm is the same you need to basically go faster accelerate faster to cover that same distance in the same amount of time wonderful we get all that great shut up Matt. get on with it so um there is a caveat to that because someone did write me a message saying okay then so why you know you showed that 110 um bore on that graph right at the top and that's the you know the biggest bore um, it's not the biggest ball you could ever have. You can obviously continue to keep on going. But if you have that big ball there, the piston forces are really small, which means you can have really fucking high RPM. Now, let us we're not talking about torque. We're not talking about how to fill a cylinder properly. We're not talking about limitations of valves. This is the core engine, right? So piston, con rod, crankshaft. If you, you know, it's all right making all this power, but if these physical attributes can't take it, basically if the crankshaft can't take it, or the rod can't take it, then it's not going to happen. But anyway, there's this is the first introduction to the real um, compromises that you make. So this is a 250 milliliter, 250 cc can of Red Bull. This is unfortunately a 330 milliliter. Let's just imagine that this uh, can of Coke is a um, 250 milliliters let's just imagine it is and then this roller duct tape uh, parcel tape let's just imagine this volume in here it's actually really close let's just imagine this is also 250 cc so this gives you a real world example of it's not but just go with me of you can see the difference small bore long stroke bigger bore shorter stroke and massive bore again a lot shorter stroke so this is the example and um, this is a night class, that's why we're in the fucking dark. <laughs> that's what we're going to call these now, night classes. Um, 
So you can see this is a lot shorter stroke, a lot bigger bore. And let's just imagine that all of these are the same CC. These are pretty much very close and this one's just a tad bit bigger. Which means if we just cut off the rim up to about there, it would be about right. Or maybe a bit lower, maybe just below since 1886 or whatever. But you can see that the relationship as stroke is the height of these and the bore is obviously the diameter of the cylinders. Fucking wonderful. Now, the reason why I've got these props, it might seem a bit ridiculous and stupid, but the reason, let's get this shit out of here, the reason why I've got these props is because um, one of the compromises uh, and how we're going to get to this MotoGP and V4s. So, if you just take, you know, um, your really short, your really sh short bore and large stroke and we space these out to like basically be a flat four, a straight four, sorry, not a flat four, a straight four like that. This is quite, you know, narrow. And if we do the same thing with the coke cans, let's put these in the middle like so, so they're all matching. You know, we have to have basically have a gap between them, stuff like that. You can see that as soon as we go larger bore short stroke, our engine, it'd be good if you could fucking see, wouldn't it? Our engine is um, wider like that if that's about right that's about right in it and obviously when we go to our big balls you can see <laughs> that is one hell of a larger engine you know what i mean literally the width of the engine now the width of the engine isn't the end of the world because you just can accommodate for it you can make wider and wider engines yes it you know weight and all that stuff we're still looking at the core engine right forget all other things we are just looking at the forces of rod, piston and crankshaft. So when you look at stuff like that, we've got a major problem here because if we take one of these welding rods and if we look at the size, just say of them four cylinders, and we can add a bit for the outside of the water jacket and stuff, but let's just use the cylinders themselves. Right? If we look at this compared to this, holy shit, you know, we're just encroaching into the the third cylinder this is a hell of a lot bigger you know the difference is crazy but it's not just about that we're like i say we're looking at the core engine these are the fundamentals this is a really nice short crankshaft right that's a nice short crankshaft there this one is longer and this one is shit loads longer so we might want to go for a big bore short stroke because um it gives us low piston forces so we can rev the fucking nuts out of this well we can't rev the nuts out of this one the the, the red bull ones and in the, the in between is the coke cans and in a sense it's the coke can ones that we go for because of this crankshaft problem so what's the crankshaft problem the crankshaft problem is to do with the torsional strength and the torsional strength is basically the twisting strength right so if we have a crankshaft that's this long right when there's all there's all this thing about whipping and stuff we don't need to we're not getting to that just yet it's just the top the twisting resistance the resistance to twist now i did have my silicon tube give me a second see if i can find it i'd buy that for a dollar right then so i've got this bit of tubing with some pen marks on it and as i twist you can see that they go out of line you know what i mean and if I go here, it's basically stiffer, yeah? Now, the torque is the same. Obviously, what I'm doing here, the torque isn't the same. But the, just say if you add the same amount of torque, it is stiffer along a shorter length. Basically, just because the the distance and the, you know, you, yeah, we'll get into torsional stress and stuff like that. Basically, it's the torsional rigidity or torsional stiffness that resists this. So, uh, you don't, you know, you the longer you make your crankshaft, the uh, worse this displacement, the more twisting, the more torsional stress, and the more likely this thing is to crack and break. So what we want is we want the shortest crankshaft we can get, and a lot of people are jumping in front of me now and can see what's going on here. So ideally, for you know crankshaft rigidity, and um, to you know to have a, a basically stiffer torsionally, you want a shorter um, spacing between the cylinders because obviously every rod has got to sit on this crankshaft. So the crankshaft is at least the size of the bores. Um, so you, you've got best scenario here, a bit shitter and really fucking horrible and flexing all over the place. And that's where 
you know the v4 comes in because if we keep these cans the same for our best option so just say our red bull cans is our best option if we get two cylinders and put them like this like that and then put another two cylinders like this obviously in a v so it's a 90 degree so in a sense these are like this if you want to you know visualize it that way if you look at these though this engine and they are you know slightly offset but this engine is really no bigger than the red bull can engine and it's a lot you know it's shorter which means our crankshaft can be our short stiff crankshaft so our v4 um you know has a crankshaft it's the it's the best compromise um, it has a really short stiff crankshaft but we have really big bores which means we can keep our piston speed down the same goes for all v-twins you know like the if you look at the pistons in the catties you look at the pistons in the sv and stuff they're fucking huge because these pistons are you know these cylinders are a thousand cc and these four just say like a, a jix a thousand or something or an r1 or something like that small tiny pistons you know they're more in the realm of the red bull uh, the coke can kind of thing but you can have a really slim engine but more importantly you can have very very um a very very short stout crankshaft your bearings are very very close together so your angle of deflection isn't ha as high and blah 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 blah. but this is why we have the v4 arrangement it's also why you just have v's anyway that's the, one of the major benefits now we're not talking about firing orders we're not talking about torque production we're just talking about packaging and how this you know this is one of the fundamental things that keeps our crankshaft really short and really stiff this is one of the main reasons why the bugatti has this stupid w thing going on because they need to keep that crankshaft as short as possible so if you double gang like this shape the banks then you can squeeze in more pistons so you can have more pistons but keep your crankshaft relatively short and stiff and the jokes will follow on after that uh, the other thing is as well exactly like uh, boxers or the Subaru Impreza uh, and Porsche obviously do their flat sixes and stuff like that the Subaru Impreza is basically this you know it's a very short it's a flat four instead of a v4 same fucking thing though you look at a Subaru Impreza crankshaft it is short as fuck stiff as fuck for a two litre engine you know what I mean it is a very very short crankshaft versus just say a, a, a straight four 1.6 or something like that you know what I mean? So by doing this, we kind of get the best of both worlds. The one of the main reasons me, people might say, well, why are all engines V4? It costs a lot of money. There is additional weights. Instead of having one long cylinder head and two camshafts for you know a DOHC, you have to have four camshafts, you know, more rocker covers, more cylinders, and there, and it costs more money and it weighs more. Um, but there you go that's why the moto gp they're you know they're, they're talking about 250 to 300 horsepower out of these one liter natural aspirated engines and they need to take that they need the crankshaft to be as stiff as possible one thing i will leave on i very very quickly caddied up the panangali v4 crankshaft so i took um the manual took some dimensions out of that and i made this model of the panangali uh, v4 crankshaft so this is pretty much on the nuts of what size it is plugged in the material put uh, 4320 i think steel and that is the you know the panangali v4 crankshaft and what i'm doing is i'm fixing one end so in the simulation i'm basically fixing this end and on the crank uh, crank pin the final section of the crank pin because this is a double uh, a double crank pin so it carries two rods on one section for the last con rod I applied a force at 90 degrees so basically applying a torque and I put 20,000 newtons in something like that and basically you can see uh, from this little video clip how much that actually deforms right so this is a static analysis the thing's not spinning so if you applied that kind of force you can see um, this video is a video a repeating video of the displacement so this shows you when it goes red that shows you it's 400 microns so what that's saying to you is is imagine we had these two bits of tape here and we put a line down them like this if you can see that you oh you can't fucking see that um let's just use the, the the white stripes you can see the white stripes in there i think hopefully that's master of zoom i had that for a while so yeah you've got this so basically what it's doing is is it's twisting 
right? It's rotating out of plane. So imagine there's a plane going right down the middle of here, right across there, through it, through the central axis. I'll put a lid on this pen. And it's basically twisting 400 microns, you know, out of rotation like that when you apply the force to it. That's, you know, the, the stiffness, the torsional rigidity of this crankshaft. Now, what I did one, what I did then was, is take that same single crank web, um, reduce it to one crank pin, and then repeat it by four. So basically, this is one throw or one web of the Ducati crankshaft, and basically turned it into a straight four. So that's just repeating that again and again and again into a straight four. And then when you apply the twist on there, you can see how much it's shifting. Now, both videos you can see on the screen now, they, the scales, so the colour scales on the side for the displacement deflection, um, they are set to the same scale. So you can see that on the left there is the V4 right at the far end, so the furthest crank pin. And you can see on the straight four, a lot long, longer crankshaft, you can see there's a lot more twist, a lot more displacement there. I'll also chuck in the pictures at the end of the stress and the strain. Um, but you can see that, and, and here's a picture above of the difference, the difference in length between the two crankshafts. So that Ducati V4 crankshaft is a hell of a lot more, it's a lot stiffer, especially torsionally. It's torsionally stiffer, it's stiffer in the bending moment, but there's bearings and stuff like that. But you can see that that's basically stiffer in this torsional, you know, torsional deflection, um, which means it's less likely to just twist off, you know, literally like a bolt, it's less likely to neck, twist and brick. Um, because it's literally got that, that, you know, it's not as long. <laughs> and you get to keep your, your engine nice and narrow and stuff, and, you know, for racing and stuff, a narrow, thin bike is, you know, a better thing. It's not like fucking rocking a boat, you know, it's on bloody a single ski kind of thing. Um, easier to chuck about, the mass is more centralised and all that kind of rubbish. But what I want you to take away from this is that for this V4, you can have a very short crankshaft that's quite stiff, where... Uh, and low piston forces so we're basically cheating we're getting it's not really that much of a compromise we're basically getting the best of both and this is why v4 engines are in a sense the pinnacle now as a little side note right at the end people are going to say ah but what about the v5 the v5 is a video series all on its own because that's fucking beautiful and we'll talk about that in the near future hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit